Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe. So, we have the end of an era. The press conference was rather a surprise, even for the men and the women of the times. Normally, the best informed of the various media outlets peppered around England. So dutifully, as was their profession, almost two dozen news reporters from England and a handful from foreign nations set up their equipment for the Prime Minister's surprise announcement. Most thought it was likely to be some sort of new policy change, or perhaps yet another remnant of the resistance still caught. None thought it would be worth reporting tomorrow. Right on schedule, at 10 o'clock sharp, the Prime Minister appeared at the small podium which had been set up for him. He readied his papers, sipped at a glass of water, placed on a stand, and then launched into a speech about the trials which had plagued England for many decades, but which had been overcome through grit and will. Douglas Holmes spoke on this for a time before abruptly announcing that he felt unable to continue his duties as Prime Minister due to personal matters and that he would be resigning in three days' time. He concluded by stating that he felt Margaret Thatcher would make an able replacement and that the coalition government would be capable of containing and continuing governance without holding a general election. He then thanked the reporters for the time. He did what? And we get a new focus stream, my friends. Hope you're all having a great day. If we take a look at the economy, it is... <clears throat> it's hurting me every time I see it. It's hurting me. That's okay, though. But how about a new focus tree? Oh, we can actually use our political power. We can modify our government. Ooh, and now it's on fire. Well, one might say that the whole tell the other factions leadership that the PM is resigning and we have a new one matter might have gone horribly wrong. Horribly in the sense of the royal party no longer has a majority in the government and we cannot get enough independence to work with us on to forming a new one. The royal divorce, as the event is becoming known, uh, means that England might be forced to hold new elections soon. Unlike previous elections under the royal party, we now have a potentially serious opposition and no way to effectively keep them from running. The future of this nation is up in the air like a coin, and nobody is certain upon which head it shall land. That of reform or stability. Election season, whether we want it or not, the royal divorce has forced us to pick a sides in the upcoming election. No matter what Prime Minister Ho may have planned, we must make a decision. Shall we be campaigning with Macmillan to bring forward the change of country so desperately needed? Or shall we work with Thatcher that our country may stabilize and start to rebuild? Ooh. United England. Stabilize the country for the... Oh my gosh. I don't know. I really... I didn't know what to do. No chance to win, Mac. Shall rise. All against you, Thatcher. United England. The Rotten Royal Party. A United England. Battle it out. The man's insane. Get the money ready. A risky, risky bet. This may backfire. Northern English voting treasurer versus Midlands and only there. What's left to sort out? The future of England has massive. No chance to win. Uh, we won't stop winning. Um, it's not so easy. Okay. Anyone but Chesterton. A useful old man. Convince who he can. Get rid of the troubles. Just get rid of them. Or the trouble. Midlands are a key. Better focus on the east. Their inevitable loss. Okay, so who? who's who? Oh, we can't even... Oh, we can't choose. That sucks. Is this still going down? We were talking about this. Yes, it is still going down. Even though it says it's trend, not trending at all, it actually is still going down. So you never know that you might be getting more poverty here as well as industrial expertise. So that's good to be aware of, actually. That's very, very good to be aware of. Any decisions? Oh, hmm... Thatcher may stabilize and rebuild. Oh my goodness. What does this one say? Reform is a dangerous word. Ooh, but do we want to go with their inevitable loss? You know what? I think we'll probably just go with this side. You never know what's going to happen. Um, we want, maybe, I guess we'll go with this way. Which one is, oh wait, hold on. Which one is which? Change England for the better. It's all against you. I'm going to assume it's this one. Change England for the better. Um... Royal Party, United England, um, stabilize. I guess we'll try stabilization, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. A United England, I'll go do that one. Just screw it. Let's see what happens. I have no idea. Honestly, I had no idea what we were going to even choose. Like before I even started this campaign, I had no idea which direction we wanted. To, I wanted to go. So, um, hmm, which one do we want to do? The royal party is leading. Well, United England. Hmm, where, which place is, like, really close? That's not bad. That's pretty close for in terms That one's even closer. We can do Oxford Shaw. Let's see what that happens there. So we gotta keep an eye on all this stuff. We got people campaigning here. London, add for popularity. Cool. RP, royal party, NF. I, I forget what NF is. New Frontiers, United England. And we're campaigning in Oxfordshire. Oxford, Oxfordshire. Oh, and Germany's still in a civil war. Paul Hedrich, if only he could win. 
then the campaign would end very quickly. All right, so we campaigned here. Uh, we're looking pretty good, I'd say, as a royal party. Uh, let's see. Well, we, uh, that's pretty pretty low right there. Is there anywhere else that they might have a lot of substance that we might need to keep an eye on? This is pretty not good. West, Mid West Midlands we might want to do as well. well. Let's try that one. Five West Russian. Oh, defeated the military order, huh? 35%. Very good, very good. And... Almost there. Almost there. One more day. Aryan Brotherhood has gone to war. And I'll get to a couple comments very soon. Very, very, very soon. I just want to see this. 35%. So we are the Royal Party. Just keep an eye out. So we're, we're doing really well already. Obviously, we're probably going to win if we don't do anything but the Royal Divorce. If George Stanley was to be any judge, the latest meeting of the Royal Party had not been the stunning success which was promised. First, the Prime Minister, soon to be ex-Prime Minister, had announced that his successor as as decided in a private consultation with senior party figures would be Miss Margaret Thatcher. Only instead of la laudation, the newly selected PM had received jeers from the hardliners, seemingly on the grounds of her being a woman, and accusations of foul play from the formists who were livid that they had not been consulted on the choice. From there, George had borne witness as attempts to calm the two other factions of the Royal Party by the moderates had been met with ever-increasing resistance, and they turned on each other as well. The moderates seemingly split between staying with Thatcher or compromising. On top of all this, at some point, the buffoon Chesterton got a pair of shoes thrown at him. What is he, George Bush? What truly worried George oh, was that as... As everyone exited the building, there was talk of not unity, but splitting the party. If the party split, there would be no government, and there if there wasn't a government, an election would have to be held. Multi-party system. Oh. And the royal party has just split. Okay, then. So all against you. No chance to win. They're inevitable loss. <laughs> I, I have, we haven't done this one, but... It's interesting. Democracy is England's birthright. I don't think so. No chance to win, Mac. The royal party is a party of stability, or safety uh, of an unflinching iron will. Oh. Thatcher might be the young, but she grew up amidst the violence of the Second World War, survived the Civil War, where many deserted for greater ideals, and she has held together a moderate faction of the royal party where others might have buckled. That, Macmillan, and that of Chesterton tried to assert otherwise, but it was not they who led our nation through the greatest series of crises in living memory. We are the royal party, as immovable as the island upon which we live, and will never let England suffer like the foolish leaders of old did when they fought the Reich with no hope of victory. We will move on from this setback and emerge victorious once more, whatever the cost. Yeah, let's definitely see what happens here. I kind of want to get some support down here, maybe. Yeah, the, the royal party loves London. Ooh, Cornwall actually might be good to try to get as well. Cool. Ooh, I got some decisions here. Oh, we have to get high command. Somewhat disloyal, somewhat inefficient. We gotta raise all this stuff up. Is there any other way we can raise this up? Um, no. Let's see. Loyalty will decrease for more efficiency. Efficiency will increase. Mildly decrease. Mildly, mildly. Um, I want more loyalty just because. That seems pretty good. Government stability seems pretty necessary. Let's go to lower it then. <laughs> Let's not do that one. I'll do that one and then that one. Because we've got plenty of political power. Somewhat disloyal, somewhat inefficient, so that's actually better overall. Cool, at least we can do stuff here. I don't want to do this one just because I don't want to lower our military efficiency. We could raise our loyalty, but give it time, give it time. Modify government, head of... well... Technically, I guess we are in election already. State of the English military looking pretty bad. Well, we'll fix it up, though. And Oxfordshire... Oxfordshire... Eh, maybe doing Cornwall probably doesn't matter too much. Who, who, who even is that for? Oh, the National Front, okay. It's a national front. That's good to know. I, I couldn't remember who the national front was. Not like they really matter that much, to be honest with you. They have corn... Not even all of Cornwall. Uh, is that... No, maybe maybe they do have all of Cornwall. It's Gloucestershire. 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 Whatever. Mm, 45. We're pretty low. Oh, they have double support there. Wow, I don't think we'll be able to get that. Anything else here? We are 27%. Let's see what we can do next. That'd be interesting to see if we can get any higher. And we are out of naval or oil, I mean. Fuel. No chance to win. Macmillan. No chance. We won't stop winning. Gain a large amount of support in all historically conservative states. That's not so easy. Uh, they'll lose some support. Uh, in all historically. A large amount of support. Or they should lose support in all states. I kind of like that. I want to go with that support just because we're already in the lead. So... Not so easy. Having a third of one's party's abandoned ship at all the same time might be a downside to the unprepared, but being the party of establishment in England comes with few advantages. Example, knowing when a politician is, is, has accepted bribes and from whom. A discreet bit of buggery might not be so discreet if the wrong person were to speak to the right papers, and that's not saying... And that's saying nothing of the affairs that we could reveal to a spouse looking for a divorce. Oh, if they want to leave a party so badly, they should have remembered that we tolerate these things only as long as they serve their interests. Leaving the party means leaving our protective influences as well, and wouldn't it just be the shame for things to go wrong for a few of these men? Oh, but, wow, that's a lot of guys, then. That's a lot of issues then. Uh, liquid reserves. I said the last time I didn't want to clear out the debt, so I'm going to invest the money. Barely. 
0.74, 36.74. If it goes down enough, well, then we're kind of screwed anyways. Oh, we'll get more. Uh, 0.73, it's keep going down, it keeps going down. That's not good. <laughs> oh. I know Death is not even a billion. That's all I'm duty. Uh, go ahead and cut that too. Good. So, uh, Alfred Fisher uh, has always been part of the fact that he looked up to the diaconate rather than the priesthood in the Church of England. It was a sinful feeling true, but Deacon Fisher never told anyone but God of this particular flaw of his, perhaps it, because it made what he did now all the harder. St. Joseph's Hospice has been a winery before the war burned its villages or vineyards to the ash. Alfred liked to think his patients enjoyed the view of recovering plant life more than they would like the dull concrete of the hospice and the city. It would have been easier if the hospice had been for the old, but many were the men Alfred had to help to do even the simplest of things were starting startling young. Some of them had no doubt sided with the government, others with the resistance. Some might have been communists, fascists, royalists, and republicans, and a dozen other things. It mattered not to Alfred. What difference does it make if the men he gave the sacraments to were from the side who lost? He had to help the amputees enter their wheelchairs each day all the same. He would read books to the blind and comfort those mentally afflicted or affected as, as best he could. He did the best and begged God for forgiveness for all that he simply lacked the time to do. War takes from all sides and gives little substance. Yes, pretty much. Good, good, good. We're over here. Get some more support weapons. Infantry anti-tank. Good stuff. Nice. Alright, is so it time to vote again? And campaign? Uh, we're at 25%. It seems like our support went down, actually. We could do that one down there, but 25% does... Oh, actually, no, wait. We're at 35. Okay, we are at 35. Yeah. I gotta read colors correctly. You know, reading is hard, but reading colors is even more. Oh, tricky dick, no! Can Kennedy hold the nation together? Oh, no. Well, hopefully he doesn't have an accident or anything like that. Let's hope not. I'm really hoping that he does not have an accident. Hopefully we can flip Cornwall. I'm not sure why they can vote here. They're not under us, so... But whatever. Not so easy. A useful old man. Deal with the devil. Anyone but Chesterton. Hmm. I kind of want to see what happens. <clears throat> Chesterton is a pathetic, shriveled shell of once a great statesman. So bewitched by visions of a fascist England that he cannot even recognize the hole he digs for his own future. Yet that we, yet that can wait for the moment. Chesterton is doing a good job gathering all the disaffected far right behind him in one neat, recognizable, and recordable block. More importantly, he is splitting the vote of those against our own party, but not especially convinced by any one candidate. So as long as Chesterton is around, it will be incredibly difficult for the United England to achieve an effective, effective majority in Parliament. We can deal with the fool himself afterwards. Good. 25% here, or no? Oh, wait, wait, we flipped Cornwall. Well, god dang. You know what? I guess our goal here is to get all states undressed. That might be very, 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 very difficult. Not in London, though. But uh, everywhere, it seems really tipped in our favors. Not going to lie. That seems really tipped in our favors. Holy cow. 39, 38, 43, 41. Jesus. It's almost as if it's being scripted for us to do well here. The European Central... Hello? Very Polish to be a Central European Council. Nothing but trees. Communications breakdown. Full Belarus. This is our land. Well, we'll see about that. Well. Okay, we beat the other smaller party down there. That's fine. We're looking really nice in purple. I'm um, enjoying the purple color. Hopefully. Ooh. Wait, what happened there? The loyalty? Ooh, that is not good. No, 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 no. You know what? If it's already so low, let's do that one. You might as well, right? So, deal with the devil. Once we do, <clears throat> convince who we can. Support shall rise. This may backfire, get rid of the trouble. Uh, we're doing okay. Let's not jinx ourselves. Let's convince who we can. United England is not a party of fools like the National Front. There are legitimately well intentioned men and women in the party who were colleagues of Thatcher for years. Who is to say that we cannot pe peel off a few dissidents led astray by Macmillan? P playing nice might even enable us to integrate some of our lost base in some areas back into the fold. If we fail, what's the worst that could happen? We are shown to be the more reasonable and stability minded of the two parties that could possibly win the election. Well, even in that scenario, we don't lose anything, so why not? Let us open our arms for the uncertain. Let the truly foolish separate themselves from our grace here and now. And keep an eye on all this as we read this to deal with the devil. Thatcher and K Chesterton cordially despised one another, but the safety of England came above all else for the both of them, and neither was willing to risk a foolishness suggested by Macmillan's little puppet, puppet modeling. Even if the Reich wasn't likely to put itself overtly quickly, when it got around to the matter of England, it would not brook an OFN presence on the Isles. For the safety of England, the National Party or the National Front and the Royal Party, agreed to a temporary truce. Neither would act openly against the other until United England was certain to lose. Perhaps they might even uphold the bargain. Sacrifice is the most noble of ideals. Well, we'll see what happens. It is June 26, 1964, and we're having a great time. Government stability. Even though our divisions really suck booty right now, that's still okay. Slowly we are rising in southern England. Very slowly. Purging combat officers. Loyalty will mildly decrease. 
uh, loyalty will mildly increase. Go and increase it a little bit more. And decrease it, because I want to make sure we don't hurt us too much there. And we're starting to run out of political power. Go figure. No one has slipped yet, which is good. 53%. Nice. That is so good. That is just delicious. Oh, Hadrish, no! Oh, no! Hadrish is losing! Promote competent? Uh, yes. Good. Hey, somewhat ineffective. Not bad, not bad. Uh, so, like, a couple comments that were from yesterday. I asked you guys, like, what nations I should play eventually in Russia, and you guys suggested, what was it? Always, like, Omsk, the Orium, Orion, Aryan Brotherhood, Fathers Sibuzia, definitely Komi sometime. I'm definitely gonna play Komi at least once, probably. B Boryatia, which I'm not sure where they're at at this point. Uh, President Mexico, no one cares right now. The Black Army for sure, which it looks like it's gone right now. Uh, Samara, maybe eventually, yeah. And then Amur. So, so many things we want to do here in TNL. Oh my goodness, the pre Presidium of the Supreme Soviet. That sounds actually really awesome. Cool. Next up, Midlands are key. Very support. Better focus on the base. Will rise greatly. I want to see how much support we can get. Let's try that. So, the South was once a stronghold. It still is, to be honest, though, to be with you guys. There have been some warning signs about how some of our more important constituencies might vote, and Thatcher has ordered our campaign to focus on their, their attention on securing the region electorally. If we hold on in the South, after all, it doesn't matter how many seats the United England wants elsewhere. No one in the hundred years has won without London, and no one in the next hundred will either. It might not be as fancy as winning a supermajority, but for what Margaret has planned, a regular majority will be more than enough. To all the winner goes the spoils. Because, you know, East, East Midlands, West Midlands... Those are nice. Um, we have a very nice majority in the East Midlands. We already have a very nice majority in the West Midlands, so it doesn't even matter. I want to see how much support we get there. And, of course, Tricky Dick resigned, and then JFK, well, he has an accident. It just takes seconds to die. That's quite unfortunate, which, you know, we don't like, but at the same time, why? We're almost get every state. Also, I didn't tell you, I forgot to tell you guys this, but, uh... I deleted some of those army divisions and I converted them all to be better infantry divisions. I did that just because it's better to have a smaller force, like I said before. Uh, oh god, this is still decreasing. It's not really worth even investing my GDP. But better have a smaller, very awesome military than a large, not very good military. So uh, I try to cut the military spending by doing that, but oh my goodness. The end of the South African War, peace at last. Well, very good for them. Very good. Still building up some more stuff there. That's good. Just... Is it? I mean, you should always invest in your GDP. Paying off your debt doesn't matter too much, but man, this really sucks. But they're inevitable loss. The polls look good. Thatcher's in the lead for the preferred prime minister over Loudling, and Louding, Loudling, and Chesterton by an extremely satisfying series of numbers. Oh, how the fascists and the fools must be gnashing at their teeth at what they see coming to fruit before them. The Royal Party has led this nation for decades. What could possibly they hope to achieve that might outdo their own accomplishments? Victory is just a matter of time, and on that fateful day, we will proceed without the hindrance of performance or the bullheaded refusal to adapt to the hardliners. England will tread a moderate path under Thatcher, so long as dear Margaret remembers who she answers to in the end. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And you know what? We have absolute majority support in every single state. This is going to be a blowout. Oh, civilian austerity. Gonna... Did that even do anything? That did nothing. Holy cow. Oh, there goes Hadrish. That's That sucks. But the big three are left. So much for the gang of full. Hey, we're back at 36. Oh, well, now, now we're back at that. So, you see this signpost. The intense. Rifle-wielding young men look, stared back at James like at a furious poltergeist. He felt lucky to have any kind of job, even if it meant mocking up vomit and spilled food around the Palastrix factory. The violence had just, of just last year was annihilating the people of England that was supposed to be over, as was aggressively divided mood on the ground. So why was he being told to fight Germany's lapdogs gun in hand, looking down his cart of cleaning supplies, Pondering the meaning of this little sheet of paper, quickly made the decision to grab his scrapper and clean up the wall. Once it was in his hands, he decided to fold it up and place it in his pocket, a living artifact from the terror of yesteryear. A new night, another night on the job. This time, a different wall was adorned with multiple posters, all decrying the many crimes of the collaborators. Slumping his soldier's shoulders, James dropped the cigarette, the buzz of nicotine emphasizing his shock at the reality these wheat-hasted flyers delineated. The scars never healed, but resistance wasn't in his job description. A few sprays from a bottle of solvent, and the ar aberrations quickly turned to soggy sheets of faded watercolor. How many more nights of this would have, he have to endure before the wounds could stop festering? With a stiff upper lip, we move towards tomorrow. Good. Uh, 0.74. 36.74 is like the best we can possibly hope for right now. Cornwall, make sure we have a very nice lead. Thank you. Their inevitable loss. All right, let's see what happens. Can we now choose Mama Margaret Thatcher? She's very irony. 
Ironic. Hmm. Let's see, we build up those roads quickly. Oh, the choice of direction. No one said the both cans of paints haven't tried their hardest. Every possible deal they could make was made. All support they could purchase what had been obtained, and now every path they could take has been taken. Now this was the right night had paid all paid off. Elections had typically been private, quite a few in England, where the outcome had never been in doubt. But this time, things were different. Really? The victory was not known by the electorate or the MPs themselves. All they could do was sit down and watch the ballots come in and see who got the support from whom. There were surprises and betrayals, along with expected trends and loyal support. But as the night went on, it added up into one direction, and England knew who would win this contested election and have massive influence over the nation. The Royal Party wins the elections. Did anyone really doubt that? I mean, seriously, look at that. Look at the map. This is an absolute win. Uh, let's see, loyalty, military efficiency, uh... Thatcher wins elections. In a convincing fashion, the hardliners under Thatcher have emerged victorious in the parliamentary elections. Thatcher's promises of economic reforms and efficiency in government have seemed to turn most of the people to her side, as the royal party had done very well in the parliamentary elections, and Thatcher had been elected leader of the RP once again. Furthermore, many of the MPs elected are personally loyal to Thatcher rather than the party, and so her influence grows swiftly in the party and the country. She gave a brief and prompt speech to the reporters of the EEC. The English people have had enough of wasteful government, a pen spending that burns their tax dollars away worthlessly. They yearn for a return to the industry and self-reliance of old, where when all men and women could rejoice in their own work and their own reward. Let us now move forward to a brighter England. The Iron Lady rises. Oh, please give me a focus tree. Oh, oh, what the heck? The grip? Thatcher's influence over the party dictates the chances that she has of passing her bills, as well as giving her more leeway to bend England to her will. Thatcher's level of elite and popular support can cause us to grow or diminish over time, but she can also immediately improve her influence through other means, such as decisions and events. The elites and the people have different goals in mind, and the actions of which increase support with one group will cause Thatcher to lose support with the other. Balancing the need of the elites and the people is key to winning England's salvation. Elitist and popular support. Oh my goodness, there's so many things here. Election season, well, we can kind of close that out. We're done with the election. High taxes, government intervention, protected interests. Margaret Thatcher has a 25% influence over the royal party. Old guard and, oh, old guard, this, no more about. Weaker upper class, strong army, overfunded military, government ties to the elite, weak welfare, high crime. Well then. Oh my goodness, this is a big tree. What is this? A necessity. A black or blue telephone. Oh. Carrot and the stick. Great Britain. Some kind of fun. Uh, the grocer's daughter. The grocer doctor. A mischance. Well, it looks like we can't do very much. Army reforms look pretty good. Rebuild the navy. Royal Air Force, a young face for an old system. The English people have rejected stagnation and lunacy in favor of victory. Victory for themselves, victory for the nation, and victory for us. The history books will doubtlessly describe Margaret Thatcher as the first female prime minister, but that alone cannot be her legacy. Men refuse to place their trust in a young woman, even as one as tenacious as Thatcher, but it's time for drastic change. The stuffy old men who rejected leadership shall be left behind in the dirt as the royal party hauls England to greater heights. Soon Thatcher will be a figure of authority for all the world to see. Well, we'll see what happens. Hold a rally. Huh. Thatcher gained 3% more influence. That's not bad. Uh, decrease elite support, more popular support. Old girl gained three more influence, huh? Meet with industrial giants. Ooh, industrial equipment will begin to improve. I'm going to probably actually choose that. Just because we need more influence. Influence. We need more support anyways. Ooh, that's not bad either. Domestic job growth? I like that. Blame the opposition. I don't want to lose stability, man. Ooh, military loyalty does go up. That's good. Urban centers. Uh, look at job growth. So 30, 37. Popular support increased by 10%. Wow. Elite support goes down. That's not bad to choose this one too. More job growth. That'd be good. Uh, and I want to do that one as well, just so we can get that. Cool. We get more stability that way. Uh, 30 more percent more influence. Make it a little bit more influential then. There we go, it's all better. I mean, we could do this still, which we need to, but we're not going to go to war yet. At least I hope so. So now we're going to get a lot more political power. Oh boy. Oh boy. 36.74, not bad. Less than a billion in liquid reserves or deficit. Well, you know, whatever. As long as we can focus more on the GDP growth, hopefully this actually goes up. And by up, I mean, like, less down. So... Hopefully it just goes like 1.8 to 1.7, or just just get rid of that negative growth. I don't like negative growth, man. Visit the factories. Elite support will decrease by 1%. Uh, cool. But popular support will decrease by 2.5%. That's not really not worth it. So the Prime Minister. Uh, we'll read that after we do the lady's speech. Margaret Thatcher must face the English people not as a candidate, but as a member of Parliament. As a leader of the Royal Party, and the most importantly, as a Prime Minister. She used to deliver a, a steely, yet brief speech before the black door of the 10 Downing Street as the press scrambles to take pictures and hurl questions. It is not just the English, but the whole world will know or witness the speech. And, as she well knows, first impressions are the most important one. 
Cool, let's let time go on a little bit more. So, and let's read the Prime Minister. The past few days have always been a rush, from the jubilant celebrations of the royal party victory to the solemn swearing of oaths before the king. The reality that she was now the Prime Minister of England was just beginning to set in. A lesser woman might take the time to settle in at 10 Downing Street, or pass purely symbolic, some, symbolic legislation through the House of Commons, but Thatcher did not suffer for those things. England was in ruins when socialist vermin in, uh, was continuing to wage her ungodly war from the hills and sewers. Her people were uh, starving, utterly dependent on the welfare of a feeble government for their survival. The Reich was in chaos, yet Franz Halder's army still occupied Cornwall, ready to plunge a dead fear's dagger into Britannia's back should she dream of being mighty once again. Most frustrating of all, the royal party had foisted upon her a cabinet comprised of schemers, cowards, and fools. These weak-willed men were determined to stay the course in an oncoming hurricane and would tolerate England's destruction so long as they would be permitted to reign over the ashes. And yet, Thatcher needed them, at least for now, so that she could begin to do what must be done. I'm extraordinarily pretty patient, provided I get my own way in the end. I guess that might be a, actually a real quote from her. I don't know that much about her, so. I'm an American, you know. Uh, let's see. I want to do this. It seems like kind of we can wait on that. This seems a little bit more important. I want more military training and stuff like that. I think this would be really good to do. Uh, we got this, the societal stability increase and stuff, so. Let's do that a little bit less. Hey, and we're at 44. We were at 40 each before, but now we're at 40. Four. Not bad. Slightly increased, but that's okay. Just tell me when I get paid. Just tell me when I get paid. That's all that matters, right? When do we get paid? Manpower-wise? Oh! You are looking Thatchery. Okay. Interesting to see about that one. Has a dream of a strong, independent England answering to neither Germany nor Washington. Okay. She'll move mountains. Hey, look at that. Look at this. Rudimentary factoring. Nice. Slowly going up. And you know what? This? It still hurts. So the deputy. Within a stuffy room at Downing Street, Deputy Prime Minister Richard Butler, known to his friends as Rab, listened to the new Prime Minister outlining her agenda. The woman wanted to privatize as much of the public sector, expand the armed forces, and eventually reunify Britain. It was certainly ambitious, perhaps a bit too ambitious. She finally passed her breath. Butler spoke. Maggie, I understand that you have lofty goals. All new Prime Ministers do, and you have great potential to achieve them. We certainly wouldn't have defeated Macmillan's anarchists without your ability to win over a crowd, but you must also remember that no Prime Minister since the war has served a full five years, and your predecessors have no shortage of ambition themselves. I and the other members of your cabinet are here to ensure you that your tenure is a successful one. We can all help you if you listen to our wisdom and show moderation. Of course, you reply, but one can project moderation while pursuing significant reforms. The British people need stability, prosperity, and security. I'll give it to them, and do it better than the UE or the NF radicals could ever dream of. I just hope I can count on the loyalty of my MPs and ministers, your, most, your loyalty most of all, Rab. Butler began to realize that maybe Margaret Thatcher was more than he had bargained for. The wretched woman. The old guard will gain three more influence. Oh, that sucks. We'll see what happens. The shield broken, they'll all eventually kill each other. Yes, please. Please murder each other. Oh, actually. Now that is awesome. Gross Afrikanische Reichstadt. I hope they get a focus tree, because that looks amazing. A giant, giant. Reichskommissariat. And annex all that stuff. That'd be so cool someday. Anyways, what, what's going on? Wait, what is this? Campaigning so is going on? Okay, then. Lady speech. Oh, God, where do we go next? We want more influence. Political power. Uh, where there is doubt, maybe we bring forth. Touring the nation. On whom to focus? Where there's discord, we, we may bring harmony. Where there's error, we may bring truth. The grocer's daughter. Ooh, a small increase in economic output. Let's do that. Uh, Prime Minister Thatcher inherits the legacy of an entrepreneuring father, Alfred Roberts. While on an open free market, he would have simply told him until he was in the grave, living off of government dole. Instead, he was able to take the leap into starting a successful grocery shop that left the family quite comfortable. The tragedy of Britain then is that of fascist regulations and constant barriers to success. Every man should be able to supply goods and services free of burdensome taxes and arbitrary regulations. Margaret Thatcher learned everything she needed to know from her hardworking personal uh, responsibility alongside the joy of serving her father's business. Soon, all of Britain will again be the nation of entrepreneurs. Cool. And the lady's speech. Margaret Thatcher was hardworking in building a real coalition of support among England's highest echelons have paid off. Now the reformist arm twister from Lincolnshire heads the royal party. In a speech to her newly subservient party colleagues, Thatcher laid out a decisive uh, vision for England and all of Britain's future. We are the children of Britain, not merely England. Until we fly all, all the isles under a united flag, we shall fly as will we shall be as flies in the wind. Only through removing barriers to growth and prosperity can we reach this goal, and we absolutely need all patriots to dedicate themselves to this cause. Congratulations, Prime Minister Maggie. Cool. That's not bad. I mean, I just don't, I still want more influence on the party. That's probably one of my main goals. Yeah, getting more support is good, but... Currently, there's 22% support or influence over the royal party. Last month, it changed by zero. Okay. That's 22%. We need more. She's young. She is a little bit inexperienced. But you know what? Anyone who's in a prime minister position probably is a little bit inexperienced. 0.74? I can help you. 
by putting in 0 0.04 billion into the GDP. Who cares about the debt, since it doesn't seem like it's going up that much. 56.06, not bad. I mean, we're still spending a lot on construction right now, but civilian factories, I think, are worth it. What do we have here? Visit oh, visit the factories. Eh, that's still not worth it. Old Guard will gain 3% more influence. I don't want that. Elite support will decrease by 3%, 5%. We get more stability, which is nice, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Elite support goes down by 7.5%, but 10% more popular support. But you'll get 1% more influence, which is kind of nice. Oh, boy. And shame the opposition. Wait. Popular support will increase by 10% and decrease by 7.5. Elite support will decrease by 7.5, but increase by 10%. So you get an increase of 2.5 overall. But you lose stability. Huh. Introducing Thatcherism. I guess I'll we'll go on down this way. The type riders in Downing Street have been operating at a furious club as PM Thatcher readies the most critical address of her premiership. Before Parliament, she will outline the future of the English economy, the broad slashing of taxes and regulations known to both friends and foes, the Thatcherism. Given that her power in government has largely been cemented, a little blowback from the addresses is anticipated. Can we do anything else here? Promote social change? Now nah, we good. Now nah, we good. So the green grocer's daughter. Thatcher always fondly remembered that her time as a simple shop assistant. Not only for the job in itself, but her purpose and feeling of advancement. She built herself uh, while she helped to build her parents' business and was com compensated for her efforts appropriately. Ownership, destiny, self-worth. These were not handed to her, but earned by steadfast determination and ability. Oh boy, let's cut the budget. <laughs> Every day she would think about what she could do better about her situation. This mindset she would frequently remind MPs and common folk alike is sorely missing from the today's England. Cut. Uh, one must work one ways up rather than pulling others down. The groceries she sold were not forced upon the customer, but delivered freely for mutual benefit. And it was not the cru cruel hand of the market that determined her fate, but her own willingness to study and work hard in these causes that meant that she would succeed and others would not. This mindset had served her well into, into adulthood, and her stern visage and harsh attitude may alienate some or drive potential allies away. But surely this small sacrifice was more than made up for her by the grit and bulldog tenacity that meant she would get what she wanted, come hell or high water. Politics is about the art of the possible, and so the pragmatic and self-sufficient Green Gosher's daughter had come up into a world that she would control utterly through skill, maneuvering, and sheer groundwork. A long march to the top. Cool. Support weapons. Alright, well, you can say that she's almost modernized the infantry equipment. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. 38.05? We were at 36.75, right? Our GDP actually grew, yet it says minus. Okay, so 38.09. I'm feeling kind of good about this. So at 38.09. Oh, it's because of the effects of the more jobs down there. That's right, yeah. Let's go change. I really want to focus on this, but they're already somewhat loyal, which is good. Somewhat inefficient, that's kind of fine. Whatever. This is much more important to me right now, so. Uh, that's looking good. Military, industry, so 38.09 is good. Construction, honestly, it's. I wish I could lower civilian spending even more. But whatever. That's still not bad. I'm trying to repair roads, that's good. Good repair roads. Eventually, once you maximize, I think if I remember correctly, once you maximize all your slots in your country, you might as well just slash everything to the bottom. Because you still get a few factories to use, maybe, but there's not really much to use it. And it looks like Goring is probably going to lose. Cool. Free market, free people. Oh my goodness, free trade. Oh, every own state experiences a medium increase in the economic output. Gain a thousand domestic jobs. Oh my gosh. The freer the market, the freer the people. This is a self-evident truth. The less the government intervenes in people's businesses, the less it will interfere with the business. Freedom of commerce will inevitably lead to, but not only increased incomes and prosperity, but also increased freedoms in general. After all, was it Nazi Germany the undisputed least free nation, a command economy? And was the economic crash of the 50s that crippled Europe not due to the overregulation and the rampant government-mandated military overproduction of Germany? If we were to ensure our people's freedoms and our nation's economic well-being, we must return to the free market. A new way of doing things. So that just started slowly in our opening remarks. It looks like Borman's probably going to win. And all the honorable members are well aware, England faces an economic crisis it has never seen before. Half of our wealth has been spent on thoroughly destroying the other half. We must, and I must re repeat, begin a recovery with serious economic reform that will refit and refuel private enterprises to take our country to its former economic standing. This will involve many changes to monetary and fiscal policy, which will no doubt elicit catcalls and cacophony from the cronies who have established themselves like weevils in the government's purse. However, I am reassured daily by the irritation of the English people with such socialist policy and their desire to see their own enterprise justly rewarded. We must utilize all of England's resources, her people, factories, wealth, and ingenuity to rebuild a better economic system that works for all people, not merely mo those seeking to middling the status quo. I have seen what the status quo has brought to our country, and I will not have it. I suggest to all members of the Parliament, fed up with the way things have been for all these years, come and join us. There's enough for everyone. And so I challenge the English people to stand up for what is theirs and take responsibility for their own future. Rather than having the government dictate what they can do and cannot do, let them move forward as the best abilities and resources can manage. Enough government meddling it's time for change here here oh political power mm, i don't want to lose stability i don't want to get but i don't want to lose Ooh, olympic games come to an end tokyo's left quite the impression 
speech in Parliament. Um, I don't want to decrease my su uh, support with the elites, but if I get my own support, I'm okay with that then. So now we gotta really focus on the elites for now, and we're gonna get those decisions back that we've already done. And Bormann went to civil war, peace returned to Germany, but for how long? That is a very good question to ask. How long? 35%, that's not good. They like high taxes. Why do they like high taxes? Or they mm, they pr like protective interests, strong trade. They don't like high taxes. They don't like government intervention. They don't like overfunded military. They don't like the government ties to the elite. They don't like weak welfare. Of course, they wouldn't. And they would not. Well, I don't think anyone likes high crime. They like a strong army, but they don't like an overfunded military. So they like a balanced military. Government support, weaker upper class. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think this election season will be removed eventually. We got some stuff up there. That's nice. Cool. Just waiting for those other decisions to come back. 38.09. Up. Oh, 38.05. Well, 0.9. We're back up there. Not bad. Not bad. Cool. I wish this annual growth would go up because this is why I'm going down this path immediately. The days of the old have passed. Even more jobs. Elite support will decrease by 1%. And that's not good. So our old economic cabinet is full of the, to the brim of old-fashioned advisors. If we are to bring forward our economy into the future, we must stop thinking backwardly. To this end, we will be, begin modernizing our economy by first modernizing our cabinet. All the economists with outdated opinions must be removed. Their ideas are well past their prime and shall retire those ideas alongside these economists themselves. In the place where shall elevate new ministers with new ideas to fit a new vision for the future. If it just happens by some coincidence that these new economists all have to support Miss Thatcher, then that is simply an added benefit. Also, so we're going to go th down this path because we're going to continue losing elite support. But then I'm going to go ahead and choose this to get a, just slightly more elite support. Where there's Discord, we, we may bring Harmony. So that'll be good. Oh, look at that. And we get these decisions back. Visit Urban Centers. That would not be bad. Elite support goes up. Actually, that's really good. Industrial. Ooh. But I don't want to lose support. 22%. Ooh, last month it changed. I do not want to lose more. I would love to have more societal development, but we, can, we need more influence. We definitely, 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 definitely do. So. Jobs. Popular support increase by 3%. Elite support will increase, which is fine with me. That's fine with me. England moves on. Months have passed since the hordes of war has scarred the minds of the English people and the landscape of the country. Many city and several town have found themselves lying in ruin, nearby the vast swaths of the once tranquil countryside helplessly bore witness to the tragedies of the damn war. Not a single corner of any field or street had avoided the damage caused, and underneath what had endured a deep mistrust was felt throughout. Yet the sounds of war, which had so haunted the lives of every Englishman, had indeed duly faded. Much of the rubble uh, had been... By this stage been removed, and the foundations for New England had been built in its place. Unfortunately, the paranoia remained below the surface, but in typical English fashion, that too seemed to have passed at a glance. If one were to glance at the New England, they would have to thought it was quite similar to what they had been before, utterly clueless to the terror of what the country had not seen so long ago. A new era was undoubtedly upon them, from the ruins of what remained, and altogether different England had been constructed. Soon its grandeur ambitions would be rekindled, England would grow and flourish once more. However, most of those who had been dragged on through the overarching panic that had seized every aspect of their lives could only hope, living on and hoping that they could move on and leave their sorry half behind them. May these times be better than the last. Good. Somewhat disloyal. I don't like that. Uh, let's see. Shame the opposition doesn't make any sense. Domestic jobs. I love jobs, man. Give me some jobs. I love this too, but I, we need more influence. Which sucks. How do we get even more influence? How do we get more decisions and stuff like that? Ooh. Ah, the Black League. Ooh. Divine Mandate of Siberia. I have to play this nation someday. I might... I probably won't play this nation after this campaign. I've got another idea about, about what I want to play as next, but... I've got a good idea. I've got a very good idea. A most convenient arrangement. While we're on this topic, I hope to see that the reduction in import duties will go through, especially for the goods of critical values that we agreed upon. Rest assured, my good sir, that we believe in the greater liberalization of our trade in our, is in our mutual best interests. The Prime Minister has parted ways, each departing with a tinge of suspicion, but even a more comprehensive flood of relief. A meeting to discuss the initial phases of the Anglo-Scottish General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade. The ASCAP was met with apprehension and opposition from both the left of the Scottish Parliament and the right of the English one, but the moderates in each party managed to secure a significant, significant, sufficient number of votes to give the Zerski, but potentially very fruitful, agreement a shot. Moderates in the English government welcomed the offer with open arms. England needs reconstruction, and in their eyes, there's no better way to do so other than to invite foreign capital and investment in and let the jobs and capital diffuse throughout England. The SNP and their allies in the business sphere welcome these fresh pastures, as outsourcing to the relatively disadvantaged England would greatly reduce operating costs. For the moment, the invisible hand does lead to greener pastures for a while. We'll see what happens. We shall see what happens, my friends. Yeah, I still want more influence, though. View military training? That'd be kind of cool. Shaming the opposition's numbers. Oh, uh, loyalty will increase. I like that. But we need more elite support. So, days of old have passed. Privatizing the community. Let's go ahead and do this one. The upper echelon society had strong ties to the royal party since before the tragedy that was the English Civil War. In its aftermath, however, even the nation's 
elite have been thrown in chaos. If we are to change the direction of England for the better, we should reconcile with the minority responsible for sustaining governments and keeping parties alive. Perhaps this time we weighed our options. Yes. Mm hmm. Nope. You know what? I don't even want to see this one. I love that. I don't even want to see it, though. Nope. Don't even bother me with it. Elite support decreases. That should gain. Oh, wait. We can get. Oh. 24%. Let's raise that one a little bit. That'd be good. Oh, oh, they went to war. Oh, because it's Bowman's Reich. So they annexed Bowman and Marion. I might play Bowman soon, too, just because I heard. Well, they just obviously annexed Central Europe, Slovakia, Bowman, Moravia. Uh, they, I think they can even annex, maybe even integrate. I don't know. The Netherlands? <laughs> of course, it would be tulips for the Dutch. Uh, let me see. Budget wise, how are we doing in budget? Mm. Well then, a coup in Scotland. Cool. Look at reserves. Three point eight point three one. Look at that. Oh, hold on. We are no longer in a deficit of annual GDP growth. We are doing actually pretty well for now. Our annual deficit is minus one point two billion. Our GDP growth is actually growing. National debt doesn't seem to be going up at all. This is great. But this coup in Scotland? Field Marshal Wimberley announced a galley to reporters that the civilian government of Scotland has betrayed the nation to foreign enemies. Citing numerous recent events and decisions influenced by cowardice on the part of the civilian government, Wimberley stated that the temporary military government would be taking over to ease the transition into a more competent administration. He stated that the military would only maintain control of what was necessary to protect Scotland, and that while he was at the helm, Scotland would never follow the threat of fascism and communism. Oh. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Did, did they not like that we were trading, or began trading with them? What? Okay, we got that. We got special forces. We're pretty much done with that stuff. I've not done my land auction at all. Uh, defense, organization, tanks. We don't have any tanks. Oh, that's pretty nice. 50% soft attack. Uh, besides, attrition planning is seems so nice. Well, more government stuff. Visit the factories. That might be fun. Sometime. Think Harmony. Cool. Uh, privatizing the economy. In accordance with the goal of a free market for our free people, we must start privatizing the British economy. Which would be a good thing. By selling off formerly government-owned assets or industries, we can loosen the grasp of the government on the economy and allow the people to manage it in their way the free way. Additionally, these newly privatized businesses will have lower prices and greater incentives to operate efficiently. This will increase the competitiveness both at home and abroad, bringing further prosperity to the nation. Oh man, that GDP, those numbers, man. Those numbers get me. Uh, I get worked up sometimes with numbers. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? We have artillery basic artillery we're still using god awful artillery like i know we have to like privatize and cut back and slash but the scottish coup the Scap scottish capital of edinburgh was a messy buzz yesterday morning when dozens of military vehicles surrounded important buildings and blocked roads they proceeded with issuing and carrying out arrest warrants for high profile government officials it circulated in an apex when scottish armed forces veterans units broke into the presidential office and put them in irons in the ensuing hours, many important cities across the country became the place of a similar action. Soon the whole country was in the firm grip of Scotland's military. The coup was disastrously successful and carried out a brutally, brutally ruthless fashion. The announcement in national broadcast was only formal as the most country had already been suspected the meaning of the military presence. For so, quite some time, the field marshal of the Scottish armed forces, maniacally wary of an allegedly impending German invasion, was more than discontent with the government's supposed mischievous inaction. Now he took the reins of fortune into his own two hands to counter the worst fears of the German invasion, which he extensively argued about in the broadcast. Now a new government is in the build-up, and it will either be a direct or indirect manifestation of the Scottish Armed Forces having complete control of Scotland from now on. Just another military coup. Oh, Scotland. See, this is why the Scotland the Scottish need to be under us. You know, they, they don't know what they're doing. A government intervention? German intervention? Well, hopefully not. If you act like that, then yeah, the Germans will probably definitely invade eventually. Visit the factories. Populist support. 24%? Almost a quarter percent. That's not bad. Oh, the P the Pacific Fleet. What is that? Kamchatka. Wait, where, where is the? Oh, is it, oh, the Pacific Fleet is just Kamchatka. That's cool. Sailor State. That's kind of awesome, actually. Nice, very nice. Uh, let's see. Actually, we don't really need militia. So infantry divisions. They're only eighteen combat width. So make these guys even bigger, so they're better. You know, I'll compensate you guys. Liquid reserves, 0.32, even better, my friends. So right now, it's costing us 1.33. I could potentially delete a division, but you know, I'm thinking probably not. Let's not delete them. Let's stop training for now, since we need to get more guns anyways. Uh, what do we need? Anti-air equipment, anti-tank, anti-air, and artillery. Well, we're not going to have any of that. 
anti-air or anti-tank artillery. I guess we're not making any any anti-air, huh? Early anti-air. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh, this one. Well, when you can do it, please go ahead. So the skill privatization, privatization. Let's do a, spe a speech blitz. Huh. Vote on the decrepit party. Where to focus? Let's do this one. Where there is error, we may bring truth. Margaret Thatcher finds her career test teetering atop of a knife's edge. On one end, the old guard of the royal party despises her for what she is, a woman of humble origins daring to assert her power. At the other end, lies the opposition, who ab absolutely decides her for what she does, that being everything they wouldn't. Politics is a game of balance, power, and popularity. Prime Minister will, be, will strengthen her support and power bases before it's too late. Good. The scale of privatization. Despite all the speeches and articles about how England must look towards privatization, private privatization in order to secure economic future, the scale of that privatization has not been precisely outlined. Naturally, there are some who disagree with the idea of privatization or government services at all, but even more were unsure as to how much or could or should be privatized. This would have to be settled with some sort of compromise, but how best to use this to Margaret Thatcher's advantage? Large or small, privatization will bloody well happen. Oh, we lose whatever. Oh, promising change within the countryside. At least for will go down even more. Even more dropout growth. Can I do something else that would help me with the elites? Nothing here helps me with the elites. I mean, this was increase our j domestic job growth, barely, but... Is there any way that I can not piss him off? Ben is inaugurated. That's kind of cool. Uh, promising future is always nice to have. Rab Butler. Less political power, but more research speed. That's not great. Hmm. Oh, hold of parliament. That could gain more influence. Eh. Shame the opposition. Uh, military austerity. Sound like budget cuts to me, man. GDP is growing up. It's just growing. It's growing, 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 growing. And I love it. Hold a speech in Parliament. That sounds like it would be good for a leap, but it does not. Ah, the decrepit potty. Good. I kind of want to keep going down this way, but we need at least 40% influence. So let's go down here. Forward to focus. The future of Thatcher's policy lies before us, splitting off into two distant directions. Distinct directions. She can either focus her energy on expanding the support within the Royal Party, or striking the opposition and crushing its relevance and popularity. Perhaps if she is lucky, she can achieve both. The decrepit party. The Thatcher cabinet is always aware of just how challenging reforming two decades worth of entrenched power would be. While the overtures to England's elite have helped, they have seeked to run the government for personal agendas rather than serve in a harmonious way. Curbing this goes in hand-in-hand -hand with turning the royal party into a more than a squabbling careerist boys club. The secret details and posturing that brought Thatcher to her position are nothing compared to what's coming to, to the corrupt and dissent dissenting within the party ranks. Those standing against reform will be surprised to suddenly find themselves accused of posing, posing in pornos or colluding with the Russian communists, complete with photographic evidence, and if all else fails, the secret intelligence service lies in wait. There is no alternative. Wow. That is something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, seriously, is there not much we can do with for elite support? Like, that sucks. That just decreases our military loyalty will mildly increase if we view military training. I don't mind decreasing it again. Like, promising change we get more GDP, which I think is awesome. Oh, no, here it is. But I don't want to lose industrial support. I, I, I don't want to lose... Or, Lower my own influence. We need more influence, so. Uh, elite support. There's only one that gives you more elite support. That really sucks. 3%, 7.5. That's, that's a big chunk. One. It's only 1% 1 more influence. I'd rather have more GDP, honestly, but... Mm. We can still do this. Somewhat inefficient. Alright, so let's do this. 7.5. 7.5 is a massive amount. 22%. Oh, goodness. Gracious. Industrial. Actually, is industry still improving? It is. So, I'm not really going to improve that yet again. Visit urban centers. I want to do this. Oh, no. This one does it. Urban centers are good. Yeah. More elite support. A little bit less popular support. More jobs. Heck yeah. And we're out of this. We can All we can do is that. So, a legacy of ink and paper. And then we'll have an episode. Arena had a solid routine uh, that kept her sane from, from, since the Civil War. After leaving her secretary position at the local unemployment office, she would ride the creaky, rusted over bus down to that little village up north, one which, unlike Birmingham, seemed relatively unscarred by the years of artillery shells. In the misty, cracked roadway in the town south, she entered Everett's bookshop, the quaint building made of dark oak, marked only by its green 
a bright green name painted above the entrance. Time to look for another volume to spend our nights with. Once with kids were fed and tucked in. After the brief greeting and chatting with old Everett, Arena went over to a world literature section. She pursued the shelves like a skilled detective and eye for any title from her native Poland, knowing that anything she found would likely be at least 30 years old. As she ran her fingers through each section of the towering shelf, she fully expected to come up empty-handed until reaching a toppled over collection at the very bottom level. All the nondescript red binding. These Within these titles were hundreds of pages written in Polish and some so old that she could hardly comprehend half of what was being said. Tales of medieval rebels, supernatural battles, and the daily struggles of family life. All memories of the land she could hardly envision since first arriving on England shores ten years ago. In an instant, piled up with the books and pressed up them against her chest, moving carefully over to Everett, calculating in her head to see if she could even afford such a collection with her meager wages. Everything you need, uh, Everett, Everett said in a nasally yet ever amicable tone. Irina replied that yes, she found exactly what she needed, but it was about 15 pounds short. No worries, love. This is, looks about as important to your family as a nightly ration package. It's yours, free of charge. With a smile and statement of absolutely bewildered appreciation, Irina helped Everett fill up a large brown bag, then quickly made her way out of the shop and towards the bus stop. On a distant horizon, the white eagle flies once more. Very cool. But that's going to end today's episode. We have definitely chosen our path down... Uh, this way, but hope you enjoyed it regardless. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall further privatize the aisles and see what happens with our GDP. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!